Hello and good day, everybody. This is Kyla, and today on The State of Health, we're taking a closer look at targeted therapies in non-small cell lung cancer. Specifically, we're discussing the use of omivantamab plus chemotherapy in patients with the third most common type of EGFR mutation, insertions in exon 20. For those who may not know, EGFR mutations are changes in the EGFR gene that can cause cells to multiply uncontrollably, leading to cancer. Just a reminder, State of Health is a semi-weekly podcast where we discuss the most important news and research in medicine and healthcare. For more information about our YouTube, newsletter, and publication, please visit stateofhealth.care. Welcome back to the State of Health. Today's topic is particularly significant because EFGR mutations are among the most frequent activating mutations in non-small cell lung cancer, or NSCLC. However, NSCLC with insertions in EGFR exon 20 is largely insensitive to tyrosine kinase inhibitors, the common therapeutic approach for EGFR-mutated NSCLC. This has left us with a gap in patient care that desperately needs solutions. That's where our focus study comes in. This study was a phase three international randomized trial that aimed to evaluate the efficacy and safety of a new approach, omivantamab plus chemotherapy. This treatment was compared with standard chemotherapy alone as the first-line treatment in patients with advanced NSCLC with EGFR exon 20 insertions. The primary outcome researchers looked for was progression-free survival, which is the length of time during and after the treatment of a disease, such as cancer, that a patient lives with the disease but it does not get worse. The trial involved 308 patients, divided almost equally between those who received omivantamab plus chemotherapy and those who received chemotherapy alone. The results were promising. The progression-free survival was significantly longer in the group treated with omivantamab plus chemotherapy. 11.4 months compared to 6.7 months in the standard chemotherapy group. Essentially, this treatment lowered the risk of disease progression or death by 60%, a substantial improvement. Furthermore, at the 18-month mark, 31% of the patients in the amivantamab chemotherapy group were still progression-free, compared to just 3% in the chemotherapy group. A complete or partial response at data cutoff was reported in 73% and 47% of patients, respectively. And what about side effects? Well, the main adverse events associated with omivantamab chemotherapy were reversible hematologic and EGFR-related effects, and only 7% of patients had to discontinue omivantamab due to these reactions. So what's the bottom line here? Our trial brings to light the incredible potential of omivantamab combined with chemotherapy as a first-line treatment for patients with advanced non-small cell lung cancer, presenting the EGFR exon 20 insertions. The trial not only demonstrated a significant prolongation of progression-free survival compared to chemotherapy alone, but it also showed promise across all predetermined subgroups, irrespective of factors like race, age, sex, history of smoking, EKG performance status score, and history of brain metastases. What does this mean? Essentially, this treatment brings a deeper and more sustained response, translating into a higher frequency of objective response and a longer duration of response than chemotherapy alone. The trial also showed a clear, early separation in progression-free survival curves, indicating rapid disease control that improved with longer follow-up. At the 18-month mark, an impressive 31% of the patients in the omivantamab chemotherapy group were still progression-free compared to just 3% in the chemotherapy group. Now let's talk about safety. The primary adverse events were skin-related EGFR toxic effects and reversible hematologic effects, with most being manageable on an outpatient basis and only a minority of patients discontinuing amivantamab due to these reactions. The overall incidence of serious adverse events and deaths was similar in the two groups, and the incidence of infusion-related reactions was actually lower in the amivantamab chemotherapy group. Why are these results important? They paved the way for a new approach in treating this subset of non-small cell lung cancer patients presenting EGFR exon 20 insertions, who until now had limited therapeutic options. These findings also underline the importance of genetic testing in patients with non-small cell lung cancer at the time of metastatic diagnosis. More specifically, they highlight the need for sensitive and cost-effective next-generation sequencing to detect such mutations, helping to select the appropriate first-line therapy before the initiation of chemotherapy-immunotherapy treatments. In conclusion, the trial supports amivantamab combined with chemotherapy as an effective first-line treatment for this patient population, potentially revolutionizing the treatment landscape for advanced non-small cell lung cancer with EGFR exon 20 insertions. However, the journey doesn't end here. 
Further studies are needed to confirm these findings and to explore the potential immune cell-directing activity of amivantamab, which may have contributed to this prolonged benefit. Anyways, friends, that is going to do it for today's State of Health. If you enjoyed this, please do me such a huge favor. Click those like and subscribe buttons, and if you're listening as a podcast, go consider leaving a review or a five-star rating. Don't forget to check out stateofhealth.care for more relevant medical news and content. Until next time, keep your curiosity peaked and your stethoscope close.